Welcome to another episode of Jay's Learning School. On today's episode, we're going to learn different vocabulary words and have a general discussion about country living. And of course, these will be topics that you can use in conversations when you're speaking in English with other people, as well as different uh, sentences that you can use with the vocabulary words that we're going to learn about today. If you're not a subscriber, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as that notification bell. I release two to three videos a week, long class lessons, as well as short, quick lessons that will help you to speak better English. So let's get into today's lesson. The boonies, the boonies, one way that you describe living in the country, you would say that that person lives in the boonies, which is short for the boondocks. OK, so when someone lives in the country, of course, they're not in the city or the metropolitan area. They're in a rural location. So one way we describe living in the country is the boonies. So you may say my cousin lives in the boonies. Or you may say. My cousin lives two hours from the city. He resides or stays in the boonies. <laughs> now, we're going to learn there are some benefits, I believe, to living in the country. Uh, I've lived in the country myself for over 20 years now. I'm, I'm from the city. I'm a city boy, but I've been living in the country with my wife and family for over 20 years now. And in the country, you see a lot of pasture. OK, pasture has to do with acreage of land or people that own a large amount of acres of land. Okay. A lot of times on pastures, pastures, they will have livestock, whether it be cattle, goats, sheep, or various different type of animals. And so you see a lot of people that have uh, or own pasture. And they rarely keep it cut. <laughs> they may cut it once, once a month or once every other month. But once the grass grows, they'll they'll cut it and that dry grass, they will bale into hay, which becomes a source of income. Right. So when you're in the country, you, you'll see a lot of land and you'll you'll say, man, look at all of that pasture. There is usually no trees on a pasture and you'll see cattle. And as I said, other types of animals. Also, when you live in the country, something I didn't see a lot of when I lived in the city were fruit stands or what they would call a fruit market. In the city, we had the farmer's market and it would be uh, where people sell uh, fruits and vegetables, wholesale prices, as well as other goods. But it would be very large. In the country, they would have like a corner market or someone would have a small building where they sell apples, oranges, cantaloupe, tomatoes, green peppers. And so you have a, a lot of people in the country, instead of buying their vegetables at the grocery store, they would go to the local fruit stand or they would go to the local vegetable market, different names for it. And so you would have like uh, in-laws, they will say, will you go pick up some fresh tomatoes from the fruit stand? Or will you go pick up some onions from the fruit stand? And they're usually locally grown fruits and vegetables. Also in the country, something you don't see much of in the city. <laughs> you see people that have chickens in the yard. I mean, they'll run out. In the driveway, sometimes they'll get out in the road and then they'll run back uh, to the yard. And, and I just couldn't believe it. It's a lot of chickens. <laughs> People have chickens and hens to where they would. Uh, they would use the chickens, of course, to get the eggs and they would have fresh eggs. 
But some people actually feed their own chickens and then they take them back there and kill them and have them some chicken wings or have them some fresh organic chicken to where they wouldn't have to worry about going to the grocery store and buying chicken that had uh, steroids in them. So oftentimes when you come to the country, you will see people that own chickens and they just run in the yard. But it's like they know exactly where they stay. So they stay right in that little area where they know they'll be fed. Right. Also in the country. You see people that own farms and barns. And of course, many people that have barns. Uh, oftentimes they may have their own horses and they keep their own horses in the barn or people would have their own donkey. They would either keep them in the pasture in a fence or they would bring them into a, a barn. I've seen farms here in my area where people, uh, they have their own dairy farm. And so uh, people sell their own goods. Then you have some people, they may have a bee farm. And they harvest their own honey and they sell the honey locally. And I, I love locally harvested honey. Uh, I buy it all the time. I, I put it in my tea, uh, put it on biscuits. <laughs> uh, and so I, I love fresh honey from locally from local bees that are in, in the area. So you see a lot of farms and barns in, in the country. And of course, you don't see this in in the city. And so in the country, oftentimes, like I said earlier, people have different livestock there. And one thing that I, I had never seen, they have what's called a sales barn in the country. And the sales barn is where people would bring their their livestock and they would sell it maybe once a week or once every other week or once a month. They would have a livestock sale. And so you could actually go and buy calves or cattle. You could go and buy a goat for your yard. You can go and buy sheep. It, you can go and buy a hog or a pig at the sales barn. So all of this goes on at the local farm or barn when you're in the country. Now, the town square. Now, of course, they have a. Uh, like the state capital in a metropolitan city, but usually in a small town, the the square is where you would find the courthouse. You would find uh, the commissioner's office. You would, you would find the solicitor's office. You would find various government entities as well as local businesses on the town square. I had never seen this before. <laughs> when I got to the country, everyone said, well, look, I'm going to the square. I was like, what's the square? And it's where people, it's like downtown. Matter of fact, that's exactly what it is. It's the downtown part of the city in the country or the county that you're in. So the square. And again, here in my town on the square, you have a lot of locally owned restaurants where people go and eat, have law offices around the square uh, and maybe two or three blocks from the square, you would have local lawyers or attorneys. They would set up because that's where the courthouse would be usually near the square. Uh, and it's usually, as we're going to talk about on the square is a historical building, like a historical courthouse. And that's here in the United States, something that I've seen in, in many country towns around where I'm from. Do you have a square in your town? Let me know down in the comments. OK, also in the country, you have a lot of historic landmarks, okay? historical landmarks where something uh, very important happened. In the time of that particular community. Uh, so here I'm in the south, so you have a lot of historical landmarks, wh whether it be uh, different Confederate landmarks, things that had to do with the Civil War uh, or things that had to do with the civil rights movement here in the South. So uh, Dr. King, Martin Luther King, he visited my town 
here and their different landmarks. They had, I believe it was the March on Selma, or one of the marches that they had, I believe it was the Selma, they came through our town, and so they have a landmark. Landmarks are often used to help people know the direction that you're going in. So you may say, hey, meet me over by the courthouse, or meet me in this historical, in this historical area or building. And it's a landmark to let people know where you are or where you want them to meet you or what part of town you're in. Landmarks. Now, one thing about the country that I find a little bit different than living in the city is everybody knows everybody. When you're in the country, it's a very close knit community. Usually in a small country town, you have families throughout that area that are related. So it's a lot of cousins. It's a lot of aunts and uncles all in the same community. So a lot of people will know you based upon your last names. Oh, you're related to the Smith family or you're related to the Richard family. And so it's a real close knit community. Uh, and so you have to be careful about what you do, because in a country town, most people may know your business. <laughs> and so that's one one disadvantage of living in a small town is that, you know, people talk. And because it's only a few thousand people, uh, word travels fast. So when people say word travels fast, they're, they're actually saying that the news about something uh, certainly did go from person to person quickly because it's a close knit community. All right. Also in a country town, when there's country living, I notice people have a lot of gardens. People grow a lot of their own food in a country town or a small or rural town or out in the boonies, as we said earlier. Yet people grow their own corn, their own collard greens, their own tomatoes. Whereas when I was in the city, you may see one or two people have a, a, a little five gallon bucket and they may grow a few tomatoes out on their deck or porch of their home. But here in the country, people have land. And they have often fertile ground or ground that they have tilled and they will grow their own vegetables. And so I would go to my in-laws house and uh, my father-in-law had his own garden in the backyard. And so he, they would always let me know, hey, these came out of the garden. Or often they would say these came out the yard, letting you know that they grew this themselves. So gardens are very prevalent in a country town. Now, also one disadvantage of being in a rural area is often there is no public transportation. When I lived in the metropolitan area of Atlanta, we had public transportation like the train, had a public transportation bus, okay? They even had at the time when I was younger, they're not as popular now, but taxis. Of course, you have here in this country, Uber and Lyft, where you use an app for someone to schedule someone to come pick you up. But that's rare in a country town. There's not a lot of Uber. <laughs> there's not a lot of Lyfts. And there's definitely no bus. And there's definitely no train or uh any other type of public transportation, okay? And so that's one, one disadvantage. If you don't own a vehicle, uh, it can be a little bit challenging to get from place to place. Whereas in the city, if you don't have your own vehicle, you can ride a bike or you can use public transportation for a couple of dollars. But in the country, that's not so, okay? There's no bus. No train <laughs> and rarely no taxis. All right. That's a part of country living. 
Now, one advantage to living in the country, the air is fresher. Whereas in the city, there's a lot of smog and pollution in the air. The air is cleaner in the country, at least where I reside and some of the smaller towns that I've lived in. We, we would say, man, the, the air is clean here. The air is fresh here. And that's one advantage to living in, in the country is fresh air. Also, when you live in the countries, there's all, often more land available. Landowners in the country town often have more land, whereas in the city, you're, you're living on top of one another. And that's that's a phrase that we use to describe how living space is is small in the cities. And man, we're living on top of one another. But in the country, you have a lot of land. It's, it's not or it is common to see someone with an acre, five acres, 10 acres, 50 acres. I have a neighbor. They own over 50 acres in their family. And so. There's more land that you can own because it's cheaper in small country, a small country town. And that's why some people move to the countries because they can own more land. OK, also in the country, you have hunting. Hunting, of course, is when people use uh, guns to go and they shoot and kill game or or wildlife such as different types of birds or or deer or turkey some people in the country they they hunt squirrels they hunt rabbits and they eat them <laughs> now i don't eat squirrels or rabbits you have some people that hunt possums and that's what they eat uh but but hunting is big in the country People like to wear a lot of camouflage. <laughs> they like to wear a lot of cowboy boots, a lot of uh, fluorescent and, and things of that nature. Uh, but, but hunting takes place at different types of the season, depending on what you're hunting. But there's a lot of deer hunting that goes on. I don't have time to go hunting, nor do I have the patience to sit in the woods and wait for an animal to, to come by. I enjoy shooting guns, but I just don't, I can't get into hunting, <laughs> but that goes on in the country. So you may ask someone, do you hunt? What do you hunt? How often do you go hunting? Where do you buy your hunting equipment? So these are things that you may say. Now, you often have people that love to fish in the country from children all the way to seniors. Because oftentimes in the country, there are a lot of creeks or what they call fishing holes or different spots where people go fishing and they, they, they like to fish crappy. They like to fish brim. They like to fish for bass. They like to fish for catfish. I mean, I just could not believe how many people enjoy fishing. If there is a bridge, a small little creek, somebody in the country <laughs> will be fishing there. And so fishing is a is a fun, fun uh, hobby. I, I've done it from time to time. There's a lake close here to my house. And from time to time, I'll go over there and I'll go and I'll go fishing. I have a couple of fishing rods and I'll cast them out with some bait and see if I can catch some bass, I like to fish for bass. Let me know down in the comment section, Are you? do you like to fish? And if so, what do you fish? Okay, what type of fish do you like to uh, try to go out and catch? And so people like to ask when it comes to fishing, what type lure do you use? Or what type bait do you use? Uh, I just get a piece, a piece of meat. <laughs> I have some artificial uh, bait that I use, but I'm not big on knowing, hey, I use this or I use that. I'm a real basic fisherman, okay? But you have some people in the country, that's what they do with their spare time. They don't play video games. They, they don't read books. They go fishing, <laughs> okay? 
you'll see a lot of more a lot more wildlife in the country. At least that has been my experience. I have seen uh, deer. I have seen foxes. I have eagle, not eagles, but hawks that come into my yard on my property because I like to feed the birds. And I have hawks. There's a nest, a couple of hawks nests that are that are not too too far from my home. And they come over here and they get some of the food that I put out. Uh, you have coy coyotes. OK, uh, there are different types of snakes and it just depends on the area that you're in. Uh, Georgia is known for having cotton mouths, water moccasins, and rattlesnakes just depends on where you are, but not not that much. But cotton mouths uh, and water moccasins, those are very popular snakes. King snakes and garter snakes are popular in this area. So wildlife. That's one benefit. I love to look at nature. So there's a lot of wildlife in the country. Now, <laughs> in the country, there's not a lot of street lights. I mean, when it gets dark, it's dark. Because it's so rural, it would be expensive for them to light uh, a lot of the area. So there's not a lot of street lights in the country. And so different areas are pretty dark. The streets are dark, <laughs> but when the, the moon is out and it's full and it's shining bright, oh, it's so beautiful because in the country, there's not a lot of buildings. And so you can see the stars very clearly in the country. All right. So in the country, there are no street lights. So uh, you have to be prepared for that. So you may you may have to say to someone, turn on your high beam lights in your car so you can see. That may be something that you would say because again, there are no or very few street lights in the communities and on the roads in the country. In the country, the, the cost of living is cheaper, okay? It's cheaper and the cost of living is much lower in the country, okay? It's uh, not that much industry. It just depends on where where you live. But oftentimes in the country, it's cheaper. Excuse me, it's cheaper in the country. Housing is cheaper. Oftentimes the fuel is a little bit cheaper. And so a lot of people leave the, the city and they move to the country because they can stretch the dollar. And so when you talk about stretching the dollar, you're actually saying that your money can go further. OK, taxes oftentimes are, are lower in the in the country compared to the city. Oftentimes there's less crime in a country town. Again, I don't know why it may be because it's a close knit community and people know one another. But in the country you usually find that it's less crime, okay? And it's also in the country, less noise. That's one reason I like living in the country. You, you don't have to hear a whole bunch of noise. It's, it's, it's no airports. Um, you can hear the crickets outside. You can hear the frogs outside. <laughs> you can hear the horses or the cattle making noises. There's, there's, it's nature. You can hear it in the country as compared to the city. Also in the country, people get married younger, okay? Usually in the country is nothing to do but have a relationship. <laughs> so oftentimes I find that people get married younger in the country in a rural area as compared to in the city. So you may ask someone, how old were you when you got married? Or you may hear younger people that just got out of high school talk about getting married. It's just something that happens in the country. As I just stated, in the, in the country, there are no major airports. You may have to drive an hour or two hours to get to the airport. Okay, I'm right outside of the city of Atlanta, and so I have to drive from my house, it's about 50 minutes. So that's not bad. 
But some people have to drive two to three hours because they are way off in the country. They're deep, deep, deep in the country. Okay. So that those are some terms and vocabulary words and descriptive words that will help you to understand what it's like to live in the country, a rural area. Let me know down in the comments, where are you from? Is it considered the city or is it considered the country? Would you like to move to the country or do you prefer being in the city? One thing I like about the city, I will say, uh, when you compare it to the country, is that there's just more access to different things in the city. But I like the slower pace. I like the uh, cheaper cost of living and the less crime that I find in the country. Okay, Make sure you subscribe if you're not a subscriber here on YouTube. Just started my Instagram channel. I would love for you to follow me there as I give out information there that will help you to speak better English as well as on TikTok. Uh, please make sure you follow me, like and comment and share this video with a friend if they're trying to understand and speak better English. I hope you join me on my next episode and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.